Okay, so <clears throat> Brian Deutsch, what I did was I took a look at the data you sent me. This is the, if I take a look at the initial point cloud that came in um, to TVC, so I took all of the original data and it came in looking like this. And, you know, on the face of it, it doesn't look too bad from a data standpoint. But what I did, I took all of that point cloud and made a surface out of it. So there's 270,000 points in this small sample. And when I build a surface model of that, if I turn off the scans here and just turn on the surface model, this is the model that's made up of all 270,000 points. And you can see you're getting that scatter plot through here. And if we take a look at that through a surface slice of view, in here, if I just draw a slice through here, you can see, if I turn off my um, my filtered surface here, you can see that the, the data that you're getting here is you know a little noisy. This is exaggerated, so if we bring it down, you're seeing a noise level of plus or minus half of, uh, plus or minus quarter of a foot to point three of a foot, depending on where you look. Um, and it's pretty consistently at that, which is not atypical of what I've seen of LiDAR. Um, I'm sure that there's tuning you can do and there's improvements you can do to make it better than that. But I've seen this kind of data before and not much we can do, you know, to, to that capturing of the process. But what we do on the back end is we process the data using our point cloud processor tool. And just to give you an example, if I take, I've done this process at a number of different settings. So these values here are the settings that are in our point cloud processor tool. So if I'm in point cloud processor, and here the way this works is if we pick the point cloud that we want to process, um, so turn off the surface here a minute and just take a look at the scan data. And if we pick the point cloud that we want to process, then we can say analyze analyze it on a grid. Now it's not necessarily building a grid of data, <clears throat> depending on how you use it. But if I start off with a grid size of let's say two feet, and I say minimum grid size of 0.5 of a foot, and it means it's going to subdivide the grid if the points in the grid don't meet the tolerance. Now, if you say that the tolerance is, let's say, 0.3 plus or minus, then you can put in here, let's say, 0.6. I found that if I used a value like two feet, it takes the mean of all the points in a grid and then places it in the center. And that tends to work pretty well. And I, so I put in a value of two feet, which is greater than the noise level that you had here. And I found that this result was the best result I, I got in the way I, I was looking at it anyway. And then you can choose that you want to take the mean value of the points in each grid cell and place it in the center point. And then you can say fit planes where possible. And that's not really applicable here, but you can if you want to. And that will pick up data on slopes and further reduce the data in the model. And then you can give it a name. So I'm giving it a name here that matches. So I'm going to call this AS2 dash one dash and I'm going to call this dash two. I put these parameters into the name of the surface or the name of the file, the scan that's getting created just so I know what settings I used to do that. And then you can say build a surface model and you can tell it maximum number of points in that surface when you build it. Now you can also apply boundaries and stuff to the calculations. It will strip out points and strip out data outside the boundary. So if you've got areas of a survey you don't care about, you can put boundaries around the site and then use those as inclusion and exclusion boundaries. Then you can apply those to the surface models that get created. But in this case, it's only a small sample. So we're just going to process this data with these settings and then hit apply. And so what that does is it goes through, grids the data, then uses these settings to reduce the data and filter it down and build a surface model from that result. So this is the AS2 scan data. So if I look at what that actually did here is, if I turn off the surface model a minute, you can see what it's done is it's taken a grid of data, but it's not just taking a random point in that grid, it's taking a mean of the data. In this case, I did a two foot grid. And to a large extent, if I turn off the grids here, you can see, um, if I go to this view, you can see that in this case, it's keeping a two foot grid, but it's taking a mean. And in no place did it densify down because my tolerance here was great enough for it not to do that. But if you make this tolerance smaller, then you'd see different grid spacing depending on what the ground was doing in any place. But of course, the lower the tolerance you put in here, the more points you get, but the more variation you're going to get. And you're going to get back to more looking like this with those. And I'll show you a few different surfaces to show you what I mean by that. But in this case, if we take this data set and we say turn off the point cloud and turn on that grid here or that surface, this is the surface that it created. And you can see that it's a much smoother surface um, that covers the terrain because it is a smoothing algorithm, but it's taking the real data into account. And it's taking the real shape of the terrain into account. In this case, 
it's a good way of removing the noise. So if I then turn that surface on in the surface slicer and compare that with the original. So if I make this a bit bigger here, and let's maybe exaggerate this a bit more, you can see that your original data has got the noise in it, but the smooth data is fitting through pretty much the mean location and all the locations along the length of the line there. And while you're getting some deviations in the surface, those deviations are significantly less than the original. And that's just down to the settings and the parameters you put in here as you, for your smoothing algorithm here. But the nice thing about that is it gives you a much smoother surface that you're looking at here, which is fitting through the mean of the data. And it really does depend on what the data, you know, how good the data is to start off with as to how good the results you get. But this is a quick and easy process for smoothing out the data and getting a nice smooth surface that's fitting through the mean of the data without having to do any kind of fancy operation. And we found that this is a pretty successful way of getting clean data through here. And we can do not just the mean, we could take the lowest and the highest, for example, if you wanted to do that. So you could see the the worst case or the low, you know, the best case or the uh, the worst, you know, worst case high or low if you needed to. But that's our point cloud process command. If we take a look at the different surfaces that I created using different settings here, then if I start off with, you know, the original data, that's the original data surface and it's completely unsmooth, quite noisy data to look at while it's representing the surface pretty well it's actually noisy in, in in its shape. But if I then go to the first filter I did, and this filter was using a, a one foot grid with a half a foot um, smallest grid and two feet vertical tolerance. And you can see that that smooths it out pretty nicely. If I take that off and turn this one on, you can see this one was using a, a two foot grid with a half a foot and 0.2 of a tolerance. So the 0.2 tolerance means that it's keeping more of the highs and lows because they're outside the tolerance. So I then said, okay, well, let's try it with 0.4. And you can see 0.4 starts to smooth it out in areas, but you're still within you're within the, 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 the noise level, so that's not going to work so great. Then I tried 0.5, and you can see now you're getting more smoothing. But when you go to one foot, then you start to get you know fewer and fewer spikes. And if you go to two feet, then you're going to get no spikes at all, and it's a much smoother surface. So you can see that by changing the parameters here, you can affect the way the surface looks and the smoothing of the surface. And of course, that will affect the contouring of the data. So the contour is following the, the triangles uh, of the model are, are going to be much smoother as a result. So if you actually look at the all data and you look at the, the you know, if you make that um, instead of green, let's make it by elevation here. You can see that with that model, then the, you know, the, the data is is color banded, but it's not at all smooth. You're getting different colors in each spike. And so it just merges into like this mass of speckliness. But if I take the same data with the smoothing applied, now you get smooth looking contours and a uh, much uh, nicer looking data set in terms of building a surface model that you know probably represents pretty closely to the surface that you started out with. And you can see that through that surface slice. Again, in the same way, if I do a surface slice through all those surfaces there, you can see if I turn on, on, on the different surfaces here and say, okay, you can see that the, the different degrees of filtering are going to give you different degrees of results. And they're all smoothing, but they're all smoothing to different degrees. And as I say, the best one is that last one that I did. So if you compare the old data with this one, then you get a smooth surface throughout that. And you just really have to keep experimenting on a sample area until you get a, 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 set of a set of filters that really work for you and you're happy with the results. And then you can apply that to the full surface model and get a, a decent result. Now, you know, I, I'm wondering whether there's another method here that we should think about. I'm going to talk to the developers tomorrow about it and see whether there's something else we could filter in here. And I, I think that would depend very heavily on how clean the data was here. In other words, if this is done in live traffic and you've got vehicles on it and stuff and you've cleaned that data out, you're going to get bigger spikes in the data. So that may or may not work. But if you've got clean data, like if you've got a new pavement surface and you before you open the road and before you've got a lot of people sitting around or driving around on it you could fly it then you get pretty clean data without things on top of it and then could we look at this data and try to find you know the 80 percent data first before we smooth it and that might give us an even better result if we could rely on the data being you know all data related to the surface model without any kind of random spikiness in the model. But anyway, we could take a look at that. But I'd like to chat to you about that as well tomorrow and also have our developer take a think about that and see what he thinks as to whether that would be viable or not. 
But anyway, I think this was a good exercise and hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you need anything else. Okay, thanks.